let's face it, guys, every reviewer's made a Pokemon joke at some point, so that was mine. Alright, so if the rumors were true, then this game has been in development since Assassin's Creed 2. I mean, jeez, that should at least add some variety to the series, and after Revelations, it desperately needs that. So this should be fun. <laughs> Before we kick off, let me just say that I love U.S. history. We actually just finished up our American Revolution unit, so huzzah! I ought to know what's actually going on for once. So rather than starting our journey as Connor from the get-go, we actually get to play as his good old dad. Now, you might be thinking that he's just a quick throwaway introduction and will almost immediately play as Connor. Well, you would be wrong. We actually spend quite a lot of time with Connor's dad. It all builds up to a really brilliant plot twist, and now we start playing as young Connor. He's a Native American, and of course this is the 1700s, where the saintly Indians were surrounded by the evil white people, so within 20 minutes, his village is burning to the ground and his mother is being incinerated alive. I guess after the father was killed in Assassin's Creed 2 and the uncle was killed in Brotherhood, the next logical step was to kill off the mother in this game. What do you want to bet that the next ancestor we play as has a second cousin five times removed that kicks the bucket? Anyway, skip ahead some years, and before long, you're a trained assassin ready to wreck some shit. And not a moment too soon, because colonial America is about to revolt. And so we have our game. Or, rather, the second half of it. Yeah, the game's 12 sequences long, and by the time you're done training, you're at sequence 6. That's just fantastic! So as you can probably guess, one of my complaints that I have with this game is that it takes too long to get going. If you've seen my reviews of the other games in the series, then you'll know that this complaint is a bit familiar. However, it's a bit of a different case here. You see, there's a three-sequence prologue where you play as Connor's dad, who I'm just going to call Roger Moore at this point because that's exactly who he reminds me of. Anyway, Roger's a cool guy, and he's already fully trained at the start of the game. His chapters are packed with exciting missions. So, what's my problem? Well, put it to you this way. Once I made it to America as Roger, I met my contact, followed him for about 30 seconds, then brutally murdered a couple of redcoats. More relevantly, I found myself constantly wondering when I would get to play as Connor. Then I could start immersing myself into the sandbox I was given. Until then, most side quests were closed, and there was no reason to try and make any money because I'm obviously not going to be able to keep it once I start playing as Connor. Then you start playing as Connor, of course, he has to go through his introductory arc that spans two more sequences. And I could live with this, but I feel as though the length of the game is not really adjusted for this. It's about 19 to 20 hours long, and of course that's really robust, absolutely worth the money, but so much less of it is spent in the actual revolution than I expected, and that's really my biggest problem with this game. It's not really what I thought it would be. You're less involved in the revolution than I hoped, and the only two famous founders that you spend more than one mission with are Sam Adams and George Washington. And it's kind of disappointing. Oh, but at least Paul Revere's in the game. Only problem, he's a complete tool. Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Where's Revere? Captured. What? Fear not. That man's no stranger to sticky situations. You'll be fine. Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Are you sure? But for all of my complaining, I of all people will admit that a game should not be judged on how you thought it should have been. It should be judged on the overall quality and fun factor. So with that said, how is this game when you judge it on its own merits? The answer to that is absolutely fantastic. This game is in competition with Brotherhood for the best game in the series. There's just so much to enjoy in this game, I don't know where to begin. I guess I should talk about the new frontier. Well, it's almost everything you could hope for. You've got forts to take over, convoys to massacre, and most importantly, hunting. Hunting's really, really fun. There's animals everywhere, and you can take them out with your bow, sneak up on them in the bushes, or my personal favorite, that, show them some Jack from above, biatch! And you'll even get to face off against some very angry wolf packs. Admittedly, these are a slight disappointment, because all you're doing is a simple quick time event. When they attack, and once you've done this twice, the novelty is absolutely gone. 
But then again, once the attack is over, you get to skin all the wolf carcasses that are surrounding you, and you can sell your spoils. This makes life a bit more fun, although it does sort of work backwards. When eight or nine wolves surround me, I shouldn't be thinking, <laughs> jackpot. I should be thinking more along the lines of, ah! Tree climbing was something that I was both excited and skeptical about. It looked cool, yet I wasn't sure how well it would control, and I doubted whether it would be open-ended enough to really be satisfying. Well, I've now climbed, swung, and shimmied my way through the forest of Colonial America, and I like to say that it works out reasonably well. The controls are just as good as when you climb buildings, and when you get to a long series of tree branches and trunks to jump across, it's really darn satisfying. However, it's a bit limited. You see, when it comes to climbing around roofs, all the programmers have to do is plop the building down, add some footholds, and they can call it a day. But with trees, it's different because they need to painstakingly place each tree that you can climb on in its correct spot. So it's a significantly longer process for programmers to do this. And it shows because there will be times where there are no trees to climb and you just have to run around Daniel Day-Lewis style. So the frontier is well done. Really well done. But what about the towns? Well, we have two, New York and Boston, and it's pretty darn cool how different they feel from each other. New York is a lot taller, and Boston is a lot more open, if I could say the differences in one sentence. And one thing I find really impressive is that in Assassin's Creed 2, you might remember that I complained about how there were numerous towns, and it all felt separate. Here, there are a couple towns, but the thing is, it feels like one big world, so it works really well. Anyway, there are plenty of side quest viewpoints and red coats to sadistically murder. Now, combat's been getting better and better as the series has progressed, and it's the best we've seen from the series in this game. Some tight controls and sick animations really sold it for me. I'm not entirely sure how to use the red coat as human shields, but everything else works really well and it is pretty fun. It's gotten to the point where I have no problem picking fights when stealth is still an option. But I still love the stealth. I love these new brush areas that you can sneak all around in without being seen. And, you know, okay, the AI hasn't really changed much, but it has always been competent. One notable omission, especially in a game called Assassin's Creed, is a lack of assassination main missions. You know, really stealthy ones. These are very few and far between, and I realized this after I was stuck on this mission for 20 minutes. I couldn't figure out how to stealthily kill this guy, and I realized that this was one of the first missions I had like this. Whatever, you can lump this under the wasn't what I was expecting complaint from earlier. It might be a sign that the series is losing its roots slightly, but hey, the game has a lot of non-assassination stealth to compensate. I do miss weaving in and out of a crowd to stick someone in with a hidden blade, and that's all but entirely absent, but the stealth we do get is a worthy substitute. I'd also like to thank Ubisoft for not having the naval gameplay suck. I mean, I smacked my forehead so hard when it was announced that you got to pilot your own battleship. I thought it would be boring, clunky, and incredibly out of place. You know, like with Den Defense. Luckily, it's really awesome. It makes me wish that that open world Pirates of the Caribbean game wasn't cancelled. It controls well, if a little unrealistically, and the combat is satisfying. I just love having ships sail right into my cannon fire. It's just awesome, what can I say? I'm also curious, did anybody else get hooked on this board game? I don't even remember the name, but holy shit, I've played the hell out of this. Of course, if there's anything I'm going to play the hell out of for the next few months, it's going to be the multiplayer. Most of you probably know what I think of it at this point, so I'll just leave it at this. It's incredible. I can't really say anything new. They've changed it so where the stun button is now the same as the kill button. That threw me off at first, but now I actually really like that change. I don't love it as much as Revelations yet, but I think this can largely be attributed to the fact that I haven't given it that much time to soak in yet, and I still love it, and I'm sure I will continue to love it. Also, eh, it's been harder to get a game than I anticipated, but that's probably because everybody's still chugging away at the single-player experience. Bottom line, it's terrific, plain and simple. I know I should probably be saying a bit more, but I don't really think I need to. Assassin's Creed 3 is a stellar title. The story isn't as good as it could have been, but I actually really liked Connor's ending, and it's nice to see a conclusion to Desmond's story arc. Added to that is awesome combat and stealth, and a great open world full of things to do. I love the multiplayer, the naval combat, just the whole game in general. This is currently the game to beat for my Game of the Year award. Not to mention that this game looks and sounds great. The wilderness is incredible to look at, and the soundtrack is epic. I say this is an absolute must own, even if you haven't really followed the franchise before. It's a great example of how to make combat in a game, it's a superb example of how to make a stealth and sandbox game, and it's a perfect example of how to make a pirate game.
it's simply a masterpiece.